but other potencies they are in middle earth powers of night and they are old and strong and she that walked in the darkness had heard the eaves cry that cry far back in the deeps of time and she had not heeded it and it did not down her now even as Frodo spoke he felt a great malice bend upon him and a deadly regard considering him now from down the tunnel between them and the opening where they read and stumbled he was aware eyes growing visible two great clusters of many windowed eyes the coming menace was unmasked at last The radiance of the star glass was broken and thrown back from the thousand facets. But behind the glitter a pale deadly fire began steadily to glow within. The flame kindled in some deep pit of evil thought. Monstrous and abominable eyes they were. Bestial yet filled with purpose and with hideous delight. Gloating over the prey trapped beyond all hope of escape. Frodo and Sam, horror-stricken, began slowly to back away, their own gaze held by the dreadful stare of those baleful eyes. First they back saw the eyes advanced, Frodo's eyes wavered and slowly the fire dropped. Then suddenly, released from the holding spell to run a little, while in vain panic from the amazement of the eyes, they both turned and fled together. But, even as they ran, Frodo looked back and saw with terror that once the eyes came leaping up behind. The stretch of death was like a cloud of by him. Stand, stand, he cried desperately, running is no use. Slowly the eyes crept nearer. Galadriel he called, and gathering his courage, he lifted up the fire once more. The eyes halted for a moment, their regret relaxed, as if some hint of that troubled them. Then Frodo's heart flamed within him, and without thinking what he did, whether it was folly or despair or courage, he took the fire in his left hand, and with his right hand drew his sword. Sting flashed out, and the sharp eleven blades sparkled in the silver light. But its edges a blue fire flicked, Then holding the star aloft and the bright sword advanced, Frodo, hobbit of the Shire, walked steadily down to meet the eyes. They wavered, doubt came into them as the light approached, one by one they dimmed, and slowly they drew back. No brightness so deadly had ever affected them before. For sun and moon and star they had been safe underground, but now a star had descended into the very earth. Still it approached. The eyes began to quail. One by one they all went dark. They turned away and the great book. Beyond the light's reach, heaved its huge shadow in between. They were gone.